So I've been running my uh, QDX uh, for a while as a whisper beacon uh, for a couple of days now. And I was uh, sort of doing some stuff in the garage and uh, it all of a sudden failed. Um, and uh, so I took it out of its case and one of the things that I'd noticed is, if you have a look here, uh, Hans describes this, but this little MOSFET here is used as reverse polarity protection. And, uh, and so I checked on the drain side and on the source side. Drain side was getting around about 10 volts, which is what I was running it at. The source side was only at 1.4 volts. So I'm uh, uh, guessing that this little MOSFET has failed. So let's have a look at it under the microscope. Okay, so here's the, uh, the section of the QDX. Uh, and that uh, the MOSFET that I thought has failed is right in the middle there. But if you have a look uh, on the MOSFET itself, you can see there's a little whisker of wire uh, or solder that's uh, caught itself between. This is the uh, source lead here. Uh, this is the gate lead here. Uh, I think that might be the problem. So let me uh, remove that and see if that fixes the problem. Okay, so as you can see, I've removed that little whisker. Let me... Uh... Uh, power it up and see if that's fixed the problem. Okay, so let me just uh, power this up again. Uh, no red LED, so that uh, obviously wasn't the problem. So I'm guessing that uh, little MOSFET has failed. Now that's a, a, a SMD P-channel type MOSFET, which I don't have any of. So what I might do is just bridge the drain and source uh, uh, connections, remove the uh, the MOSFET and bridge the drain and source connections and uh, and uh, see uh, if that fixes the problem. Okay, so there's the uh, MOSFET and I've surrounded it with uh, some Kapton tape. Um, I use my air gun to get it off. Uh, I won't do it uh, behind the camera. It's, uh, it's too tough. Uh, but anyway, I'll get that off and come back. Okay, so there's the uh, MOSFET removed and cleaned off. Now, I will order some of these uh, P-type MOSFETs, uh, but like I said, I don't have any in stock at the moment. So I'm just going to temporarily bridge the drain and the source. I mean, obviously, that'll remove my reverse polarity protection, but it'll get the radio up and running again, I hope. So anyway, this is the uh, drain, this is the source, and this is the gate here. So I'll just join these two together. Should have the radio back on the air. That's fingers crossed anyway. Okay, so there's the uh, the drain and the source bridged. Um, that's 28 gauge wire. Um, I didn't quite make the cuts correctly, but uh, anyway, let's uh, power this up and see if that fixes the problem. Okay, so let's uh, power this up right now. Oop, bear with me. Uh, the red light the LED comes on and it's flashing. That uh, indicates uh, everything is good. Uh, what I'll do is I'll uh, just uh, confirm that uh, WSJTX is still able to talk to this radio uh, and then we should be done. Okay so I fired up uh, WSJTX and uh, connected it to the radio and uh, as you can see it's receiving uh, receiving uh, uh, signals on uh, 40 meters, I'll change it to 20 meters there and uh, you can see that uh, everything's okay. So anyway I thought uh, People will be interested in, in this quick little video. Um, I'll probably do another one when uh, I get those uh, P-channel MOSFETs uh, in so I can uh, re return this to fully working order. I mean, just to note, um, I didn't uh, connect uh, reverse polarity to this. This had just been running for a few days, so uh, not quite sure what went wrong. Uh, I guess that little MOSFET failed. So, uh, so anyhow, there you have it. All right, hope you enjoyed this. That's all for now.